His Lordship wisely decided to go no further and ordered us back to London. Careful, that's Mousel, not Mousehole, they tell you. And over gift shops, in a string of picture book places, you'll see names that read like fairy whistle stops. Tintagel, Marazian, Polpero, Nanpara, the Mourner, Lost Withiel. Time has stood still through the sunny centuries here, where the sea yields such fresh succulents. I, I bet there's a jolly nice little hostelry here. Postbridge. His lordship's throat was a little dry from travelling. Here is the world as nature planned it, without any meddling by man. In the middle of this heathery desert... Yes, you're right, I'm parched. There's an oasis of trees and lush pasture. A sudden surprising joy that will belong to you as long as memory lives. You discovered this tinkling brook for yourself. You'll wrap it up in your mind and take it home with you. Oh, shut up, Cavendish. Tinkling ice over a spot of something is what I wanted to discover. Torquay. I know for a fact there are pubs here. Indeed, my lord. And from spring until late autumn, Torquay is a fairyland of colours, day and night. Uh, pale ale is a good colour. You can also get that West of England charm, my lord, without so much as leaving Torquay's town boundaries. Castle. All it needs a good stiff one. It's the old, old story, my lord, translated into high drama, played out unendingly by the two great elements. All round the coast you see this land-sea love affair at different stages. Boss Castle Harbour, and here that artful sea shows us another way he's discovered of stealing into the granite heart of the rocks he loves. Valley. No hostelries, I suppose. This is a man-made miracle, my lord, built at the seaside base of a 400-foot cliff. There's no room on the road to the inn or in the streets around for anything much bigger than the humble ass. Well, you should feel at home then, Cavendish. Mevagissi. Mevagissi. Another of those land-sea lovers meeting places where the houses put their heads together and whisper across narrow streets. There the fishermen seem unaware that their sleepy village has become a holiday haven. They only know that the mackerel that you should spin for offshore are the sweetest you'll ever taste in the whole of your life. work, fishing. Plymouth. And here is history brought up to date. Plymouth. With its big city bustle and stirring reminders of its swashbuckling past. Plymouth Ho. Immortalised by Drake and his merry, merry men. And that famous game of bowls. Still played there where Drake waited for the Spanish Armada to sweep into fighting range. Drake's cannonballs never cracked home much better than that. 
Drake, there's a fellow who could splice the main brace. When are we going to? Patience, my lord. See how the sea conducts his love affair in Lulworth's coves, carving a bridge of size out of the cliff. Linmouth. Time to be on the road home. With a drink to cheer you on your way, my lord. About time too, Captain this. By Jove, anyone would think the stuff was rationed. I'm looking forward to a live map. Uh-oh. making that dreadful noise for? I think it must be closing time, my lord. But we'll be back in the west of England, my lord, without the shadow of a doubt. Sometime. Not without a bottle or two. The picture book villages, the sudden secret harbours, these rocks that the restless sea forever kisses. The sun, the palm trees, the flashing streams are way behind you now, my lord, in the winding road that will be memory land, until one year it becomes the way to the west again. Turn back, Lord Charles, to London. Cavendish, this is a conspiracy, a foul plot. I've got to pop into the House of Lords for me attendance money. As you say, my lord. And keep quiet when you get there. They'll be bedded down for the afternoon. Next week, Lord Charles comes face to face with the dynamic duo Pomp and Circumstance. <laughs>